Hey guys, and welcome to Should You Buy It, where all we do is talk a little bit about the game and tell you whether or not we think it's worth the cost. In this episode, we'll be playing Vulcanoids, the open world survival crafting game where you must take back an island infested by an underground robotic civilization. Now the first question that we always cover in these videos is what stage of development is the game in? And in this case, in Vulcanoids, the game is currently in early access and available on PC for $20. Now, if you guys want to save money on games, you should check out Humble Bundle in the description below. Humble Bundle will not only help to give you a discount on games sometimes, but will also help charity and support this channel. Everything you purchase on Humble Bundle will go towards helping a charity, helping our channel, and giving you some kind of a discount if there's a discount running on that game, which they have tons of discounts that Steam does not all the time. And again, if you want to save money, just check out Humble Bundle down below by clicking the link. But what exactly is the game? Well, Vulcanoids is a first-person survival game where you're more or less going to take control of a giant mobile base. This base takes the form of a giant drill train-like vehicle. In order to get one though, you will first have to take out some of the local Vulcanoids and steal a vehicle for yourself. The rest of the game will have you completing little quests for the captain that brought you to this island. These mostly serve as a guiding hand to the player rather than an actual storyline. For example, you'll be asked to do things like gather resources, craft items, upgrade your ship, complete research, or even to go take out some enemy Vulcanoids. These quests really aren't necessary for you to do, but considering how unintuitive some of the game's mechanics can be at first, it was certainly a welcomed addition. As you start to grind out resources to upgrade your giant drill ship, you'll eventually be sent to take out a giant laser drill that is located underground. When you get to this point, you'll need to take out the enemy drill legs so that it collapses and unlocks the next tier of progression. In order to get around the island though, you'll have to use the game's what I'm going to call a 2D driving interface. The 2D driving interface is basically just a 2D map of the underground cave system in which you control your ship by clicking where you want to go. Some destinations, however, are blocked off and require you to have a certain upgrade for your ship, such as say a more powerful drill in order to proceed. This is where the main progression systems of the game start to come in, in order to help the player be prepared to take on some more dangerous enemies further into the game. Now when it comes to dealing with all of those enemies, you'll have a pretty wide variety of weapons to choose from. Some of which are defensive, such as the turret modules that you can put on your drill ship and act as a sort of automatic turret to defend your base, while others are offensive like the SMG, rocket launcher, drones, pistol, shotgun, and sniper rifle. There were actually quite a few options when it came to your weaponry choices, so it did keep things interesting. And now let's move on to the pros and cons section of the video. First up for the pros is that the game had a really, really cool concept. I mean, the whole idea of this civilization that's been living underground taking over this island and now you have to retake it back by using their technology against them and getting to build this mobile base with a drill ship was just really, really cool and really enjoyable to actually partake in. I think that the concept here is probably one of the best things that this game brings to the table. Next is that the game would be really, really fun with friends. And what I mean here is that the game is clearly designed with multiplayer as an intent, not an afterthought. And you can see that in the way that you actually have to grind for things. This isn't really easy to put into simple terms for you, but the game almost feels like it's been balanced for at least two players rather than for a single player by themselves. Finally, is that the game actually offers you a few different difficulty options. You have easy, and then you have normal or medium difficulty, and then you have a hard difficulty which you can unlock by completing all of the quest lines on the normal difficulty. Either way, this is great for players who want more of a challenge after they beat the normal game, and also great for players who just want a nice casual experience. 
Now for the cons. And first up for the cons is that the combat feels really, really clunky. There were tons of times where I thought I would hit a target, but it didn't actually hit the target, or you know, the bullet's travel time didn't quite sync up with where it was actually hitting. This is really hard to put into simple context for you, so I'm just gonna use one example. And that's whenever I was using the rocket launcher in particular, you had to wait for it to do this really, really long reload time. And I don't mind it having a long reload time it's just that it looked like it was ready to fire and then it had to extend out and do all this like cool cinematic stuff but it just felt like it was a drag to use and the rocket launcher is a pretty late game weapon so you would think it would be really fun and exciting to use but unfortunately with how the combat overall is designed it just felt like it was not really well polished and just not really up to par yet next up is that maintaining your ship and getting the amount of resources required felt very tedious and made the game get boring very quickly. Now, in the first few hours of the game, you really don't notice this, but after you get three or four hours in, you start to feel like you're just grinding and grinding and grinding, trying to get these resources that you need in order to go and fight these different Vulcanoids around the map. For an example, you'll need tons of ammunition to take down an enemy ship, which means you need to have a lot of resources to make all of that ammunition. In order to get those resources, you're either gonna have to go mine them yourself or build drones on your ship that cost resources themselves to mine it for you, but they can also only mine a limited amount. It's kind of a whole confusing thing Thing right now, but just know it feels like you have to grind a lot for the amount of rewards you're getting sometimes, and that definitely did not feel good. After that is that the game just felt visually underwhelming. Again, great concept here, but graphically it felt lackluster and like it was made in maybe the mid to early 2000s, so I would love to see some more graphical fidelity here, you know, an enhance on the graphics overall, and I get this isn't a triple A title, so I'm not expecting them to work wonders here, but things just overall looked pretty bad graphically outside of the robots I was fighting. And I mean, this is really prevalent when it comes to the terrain in the game, when you're on that top level, on the surface level. It's hard to really put into words, but if you just look at it for a few minutes and really get a good look at what you're looking at, it just doesn't really feel that great. And speaking of graphical fidelity, that's going to bring me into my next con, which is that the UI just felt very, very clunky. Again, Again, another really hard one to explain, but nothing felt super intuitive when it came to interacting with the UI. It didn't feel like it looked graphically that appealing to the eye. You know, interacting with crafting tables also is not the most intuitive thing in the world. So overall, I think it just needs like an overhaul, some more polish. The concepts are there, but it just doesn't quite make all the sense in the world, and it just doesn't quite feel right. Finally for the cons is that the underground driving portion of the game, and what I'm talking about here is that 2D driving interface, really just felt bad almost lazy to a point, and I get it's early access. This might change, we don't know. You know, I don't know what the devs intents are at this point in time, but what I can say is that driving around on a 2D plane in a 3D game just felt like you were clicking where you wanted a little piece of paper to go on another piece of paper. It didn't feel engaging. It didn't add anything to the game. They literally could have just made a button that says go to cave two and that would have been equally as valuable to me. I mean, it, if anything, it would have been better because I don't have to sit here and drive around this 2D map and on a 2D plane with a 2D little you know, drill thing in order just to get from one location to the next. Either way, it just felt a bit lazy and like it needs a complete overhaul if they intend to keep it in the game. So now it's time for the rating for the game. And when we rate games, we want to get one hour of enjoyment out of every $1 that the game costs. So for this game in particular, in Vulcanoids, we would want to get roughly 20 hours of enjoyment out of the $20 cost of the game. And after putting several played hours into this game, we give it. 6 out of 10 potatoes. Vulcanoids boils down to a game that needs a lot more polish on almost all of its fronts. It's not a bad game by any means, but it's also really nothing impressive outside of that concept. This certainly won't be the next big survival game, but I think for those of you who really enjoy the survival game genre as a whole and are okay with dealing with some jankiness, then Vulcanoids is probably worth the cost. 
With all that being said, make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and you want to see more content like it. And I want to give a big shout out to our Platinum and Above channel members, which currently include Caustic FPV, Jonathan S, Gerald89, AZ Blackbird, and Jim Phillips. I'm Game Advisor, and I'll see you next time.